Every year, racing pigeons vanish. Not a few, but thousands at a time. In a single unexplained event, the birds simply disappear mid-flight, leaving their owners, called fanciers, with nothing but silence and a devastating mystery. These mass disappearances are so common, they have a name. They call them smashes. This isn't just a tale of bad luck or poor weather. It's the story of a highly evolved animal caught in an invisible war, where forces ranging from the sun's deepest secrets to the static hum of a city street are actively turning off its mind. These birds are nature's most elite navigators, flying hundreds of miles from places they've never been. But for a champion pigeon to lose its way, something must shut down its very ability to know where it is and which way is home. But things were about to take a dark turn. In its premier race of the year, the National Flying Club released more than 5,000 pigeons, including birds from the Queen's own loft. To get home from their release points in Europe, the birds must fly back across the English Channel, a body of water known in racing circles as the Pigeon's Graveyard. Well, that can be a graveyard race, but then again, it's a very popular race. On the day of the race, 5,560 birds were released, but only 622 managed to return home. Almost 90% of the birds, including all of the Queen's birds, are presumed to have perished. Yeah, disastrous. There's still only 14 birds, very young birds, very fried in section K after about 350. I just don't know what's going wrong. The word is bad, not to wipe it out, literally. Particularly for young birds, crossing the channel for the first time is extremely daunting. The birds face a body of water with no end in sight. But they don't like it, it's alien to them. It's unnatural for any bird to fly over a water we can't see land to the side. It frightens them. Circling until they realize there's no way around it, the birds attempt the crossing. They are known to fly close to the surface of the water to avoid winds at higher altitudes, and many may drown, swept under by the waves. Others tire, yet there is nowhere to light. The Invisible Killer, When the Sun Blinds the Compass. To navigate those vast distances, the pigeon possesses a hidden superpower a complex quantum level compass believed to reside in their eyes. This compass senses the Earth's magnetic field, utilizing a delicate mechanism called the cryptochrome radical pair. It's one of nature's most sophisticated instruments, but it's dangerously vulnerable. The most spectacular cause of these smashes comes from space. When the sun experiences intense activity, such as a massive coronal mass ejection, or CME, it blasts powerful, charged particles toward Earth. When the solar wind slams into our planet's magnetosphere, it creates a geomagnetic storm. This storm instantly warps and distorts the Earth's steady magnetic field, making it unreliable. Imagine your GPS suddenly giving you 20 contradictory directions at once. That's what happens to the pigeon. Its primary guidance system is suddenly scrambled, leading to widespread disorientation and mass failure a phenomenon repeatedly linked to these known solar flares. Wise fanciers in northern areas, where this effect is stronger, now routinely monitor the magnetic A index and K index. Knowing that a reading too high means it's simply unsafe to fly. If the sun can turn off their compass, what invisible pollution are we pumping into the atmosphere that does the same thing every single day? Pigeons are, properly, rock doves. They're gentle birds who have tested higher on intelligence tests than dogs and some primates. In World War II, Britain relied on homing pigeons to fly through enemy gunfire and across the stormy and unpredictable channel to deliver vital coded messages. And a pigeon was the first animal to receive the Dickin Medal, the Victoria Cross for animals, for conspicuous gallantry or devotion to duty. Today, however, homing pigeons are put through their paces and forced to risk and lose their lives for simple human amusement. For the punters, it's just having a flutter, but for the pigeons, it's a matter of life and death. 
Most of the more than two and a half million pigeons kept for racing in the UK will not survive the season. Terrible. Terrible. There's not, there's not a single organisation in the UK had good racing this year. It's absolutely abysmal. Over the last two or three years, there has been a gradual deterioration. There's a hell of a lot of pigeons going missing. The last three years, it's just, it's got worse. You were all guessing, to be honest with you. With the wires, with people shooting, and with the whole problem that we got, if you were completely honest, out of that hundred youngsters, by the time you get to two years old, if you've got 30 of them, you're doing well. The amount they come back that have hit wires and their breasts are all ripped open, they're cut across the front, and they get back, they have a drink, and the water just falls straight out. The white noise war, radio interference. Beyond the acute threat of the sun lies a more chronic, insidious enemy, man-made electromagnetic interference, or EMI. This is the low-level pervasive noise that constantly saturates our modern industrialized environment. There's been massive speculation, and some reports have hinted at, concerns that 5G cellular radio waves are killing birds outright. Experts have widely dismissed the idea that 5G is lethal. However, the fundamental scientific finding remains undisputed. A continuous barrage of low-level radio frequencies, such as AM radio waves, can absolutely disrupt the magnetic compass of birds. This effect is explained by biophysics, which suggests this energy interferes with the radical pairs inside the pigeon's eye, effectively jamming the quantum compass. Since pigeons typically fly at relatively low altitudes, they are continuously swimming in this electromagnetic white noise. While they can compensate when the sky is clear, this anthropogenic interference is catastrophic when they need their magnetic sense most. Under heavy cloud cover, when their sun compass is useless, this daily invisible interference may be the true secret behind the chronic, unexplained losses that don't make headlines. That's only half the story. To truly navigate, a pigeon needs a smell map, and that map is being erased by pollution. If birds come down on land but have not reached their lofts, they cannot defend themselves from predators, and they don't know how to feed themselves, having always been given commercial feed. One prominent racer wrote, It doesn't take a Rhodes Scholar to work out what happens to our lost birds. The most infamous race of all is the annual Barcelona International, in which 25,000 birds are entered. Pigeons arriving in Barcelona from the UK must fly up to 900 miles, negotiating many hazards that they have never faced before. The US pigeons is coming out. The last part of their, their journey home is the English Channel. And that's where it's a death for them. The casualty rate from pigeon races is staggeringly high, but the carnage doesn't end there. Survivors of races who finish out of the money, and those who aren't kept for breeding, are referred to as rubbish, and they're typically killed after the season. I'm quite this one with pigeons. The blood papers born, they get a couple of years, the different pains of the and the love pigeons and what a compass tells a bird which way to fly, but the pigeon still needs a map to tell it where it is relative to home. For long distance journeys, scientists have overwhelming evidence that this map sense is built on smell, a detailed olfactory map of atmospheric trace gases and volatile organic compounds. The theory is brilliant. As the bird flies around its home loft, it learns specific odors associated with specific wind directions, when released far away, it smells the local atmosphere and calculates its position relative to its home loft based on these predictable odor gradients. The olfactory riddle was solved by tracking birds in filtered air. When pigeons were transported in charcoal-filtered, pure air, even if artificial smells were added, they showed severely impaired navigational performance and got hopelessly lost. They need intact environmental air to make the map work. This is where industrial pollution takes a dark turn. The navigation system relies on subtle, predictable chemical gradients. When a pigeon flies through a dense urban plume of pollutants, 
such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons from a major city, the chemical chaos can overwhelm their sensors. This wave of intense alien odors masks the subtle natural cues, resulting in instant map failure. The pigeon knows which way is north, but it no longer knows where home is. But even if their compass and map are perfect, another kind of invisible force can literally shield them from the sound of home. The Barrier of Silence, Acoustic Shielding Adding another layer of complexity is the controversial theory of the infrasound map. Pigeons can hear remarkably well, detecting ultra-low frequency sounds, infrasound, that are completely inaudible to humans. Some researchers propose that the birds use these sounds, which are radiated from geographical features like steep hills and oceans, to build a kind of acoustic position map. If this acoustic map is real, then sudden atmospheric changes can act as a powerful barrier of silence. Large, fast-moving weather fronts, temperature inversions, or wind shear can scatter or divert these infrasonic signals, effectively shielding the pigeon from the acoustic reference point of its home loft. But the real threat in the skies is the cumulative failure. Heavy overcast and fog don't just block the sun's compass, they also completely eliminate the visual landmarks, the motorways, rivers, and wind turbines, that pigeons rely on for the final 10 to 25 miles of their journey. It is the simultaneous failure of the magnetic, celestial, and visual systems that creates the perfect storm for mass disappearance. These navigational failures explain the headlines, but they hide the most devastating and constant secret of the sport, the staggering numbers that vanish every year. While the spectacular smashes capture the most attention, the simple devastating truth is the chronic routine mortality rate in racing is staggering. Conservative estimates suggest that over 40% of all racing birds fail to return home each year. When these figures are applied across the whole of the UK, they suggest that an estimated 2.4 million pigeons vanish annually. The vast majority of these losses are not due to cosmic storms, but to sheer physical collapse. Pigeons often return home critically exhausted and dehydrated after long, brutal flights. Experts stress that many fanciers miss the critical golden two-hour recovery window, which requires immediate electrolytes, special feed mixes, and complete quiet to prevent physiological weakness. Chronic weakness, dehydration, and exhaustion are major factors that contribute to the cumulative risk of loss. The biggest threat isn't solar wind or even pollution. It's the invisible enemy we barely discuss, predation and disease that sweeps through lofts. The unseen enemies, raptors and epidemics. For decades, the finger of blame for loss has pointed at natural predators. Surveys show that a vast majority of fanciers, up to 84%, believe that raptors like the peregrine falcon and the sparrowhawk are the main cause of all pigeon loss. However, the reality is more complex. While raptors certainly account for chronic routine loss, they are a very real danger around the loft, they don't explain the sudden catastrophic vanishing events. The true unseen enemy may be far smaller. Acute disease outbreaks can mimic a mass navigational failure by causing swift, widespread casualties. Avian trachomanosis, caused by parasites, is an emerging and potentially fatal disease. This infection creates severe lesions that can obstruct the bird's throat, leading to starvation, dehydration, or suffocation. Historical epidemics of this disease have been linked to the deaths of thousands of pigeons in extremely short periods, proving that a tiny pathogen can be just as devastating as a massive solar storm. So, what does this invisible war tell us about the future of a creature that flies by quantum mechanics and a sense of smell? The Unsolved Secret of Orientation The ultimate mystery of the vanishing pigeon is that failure is never a singular event. It is always the tragic consequence of multiple redundant systems. The sun, the magnetic field, the scent of the air, and the shape of the landscape, all collapsing at the same time. Today, researchers are still racing to identify the specific volatile organic compounds that make up the olfactory map the tiny chemical recipe for navigation that is being erased by our own air pollution. 
The racing pigeon is a tiny, magnificent creature caught in the crossfire, a living instrument of orientation, trying to process quantum mechanics and cosmic energy while navigating the chaotic, noise-saturated world we have built around it. Its fate is a powerful reflection of how deeply connected and how easily disrupted the complex sensory web of nature truly is.